I'm Sam. I'm Keith. And this is our talk, Just Another Marble Monday. So in this talk, we will discuss the benefits of marble testing, what exactly marbles are and how to write a marble diagram, my favorite, marble syntax, oh, I'm sorry, and hot and cold observables. We'll also get into some examples of marble tests. We'll take a look and learn about how RxJS uh, schedules observables and how we can override that in our tests with the test scheduler. We'll do a little bit of coding together and implement an 80s dance-off feature into a clone of the popular tour of heroes. And lastly, a quiz. He's kidding. No, I'm not. Seriously, <laughs> quiz. Hey, Keith. What up, Sam? Why should we write marble tests? I'm glad you asked. I think Jeff said it best. Asynchronous development is hard. So when we write web applications, we're largely writing asynchronous code. There are many good reasons for this, which I'm not gonna get into today, but there are some byproducts of this. When we're testing asynchronous functionality, such as observables, it's, it's very difficult to write these tests in a way that's easy to read and understand. Sam, have you ever had to write a, a test for an asynchronous function where you had to uh, set up how your data was being resolved up at the top before actually executing the functionality down at the bottom. Didn't it feel like everything was out of order? Yes, it's the worst. Well, marble tests have you covered because they allow you to write your tests in a, against asynchronous functionality in a synchronous way. So this allows you to write your tests in a fashion that much more closely resembles the actual flow of logic through your application. And... Um, and then everything feels a little better. And that is radical. <laughs> I know, right? So this and the fact that Marvel syntax is nicely descriptive of what and when things are happening in your uh, observable uh, makes it much more readable. Also, when writing observables, it's really easy to create race conditions in your application. Marvel testing is a great way of exposing these types of issues. Awesome, thanks Keith. No problem. So, alligator.io says that marble diagrams are a way of visually representing observables. So here is a marble diagram. So first, the lines show the flow of time as indicated by the arrows on the right side. Next, we see the marbles, which are values emitted by the observable. Then we see the operator, which here, in our case, it's multiplying everything by 10. Then we see the bar at the end of the sequence, which represents completion. The output contains the values that subscribers to the observable will receive. I always forget that line. Okay, <laughs> and lastly, the X represents an error if one is present in your code. Ooh, ooh, isn't that one of the, the answers to the quiz later? Keith, how is Brad gonna win our quiz if you tell everybody the answers? My bad. You're welcome, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get into marble testing, we are going to learn how to read them. Every time I told someone I was speaking on marble testing at IngiConf, the response was pretty much the same. They had to write a marble test at one point or another and they couldn't figure out what the symbols meant. That is marble syntax. And it's also my favorite, don't ask why I'm a dork, I know. Everyone knows you're a dork, Sam. All right, so uh, let's briefly discuss marble syntax. Uh, when I first started writing marble tests, I was a little confused by it. The symbols that that we put into the, the test, they didn't immediately make sense. I'm hoping with this baseline level of knowledge that it'll help you when you start writing a uh, marble test yourself, that it'll make, make a little more sense and be easier. Can we get a raise of hands? Who has written a marble test before? Okay, oh. awesome. Well, this is old news for you guys. <laughs> All, right. All right, well, let's still, let's, let's go over it real quick. So dashes, um, dashes represent a period of time, uh, usually, 10 frames, and a frame is equivalent to one millisecond. A pipe represents completion. So at this point, the observable would stop actually emitting values. The pound sign represents the dreaded error. I don't like finding those in my code. Yeah, me neither. All right, uh, next, characters are variables which represent values emitted by the observable. 
you can use parentheses to group together functions that need to be executed together, need to be executed synchronously. And the caret represents a subscription point. This is only used in hot observables. Hey, I think that one's on the quiz too. Come on, Sam. You just gave me a hard time and now this? What's going on? All right. All right, hot and cold observables. Let's dig into this a little bit. So in our own words, hot observables are creating values before the subscription has started. With cold observables, nothing happens until something or someone subscribes to it. A good example of a hot observable is mouse movement, because the mouse is moving or happening before somebody is listening or not. A good example of a cold observable is an HTTP request. Nothing happens until someone subscribes to it. So hot and cold observables is a concept that once you get it, it makes sense. It's not that hard. But it's difficult to, to explain, and therefore there ends up being a lot, of, uh, a lot of confusion on the topic. So one of the things that we wanted to do in this presentation was find a, an example that explains hot and cold observables that we can all relate to a little better. Uh, as we were preparing for this talk, we found a great uh, uh, blog post by Quentin Pisman where he took some real life metaphors and, um, and related that to hot and cold observables. So he said, hot observables are like watching a movie in a movie theater, and cold observables are like watching a movie on Netflix. The reason why watching a movie in the theater is like a hot observable is because regardless of when you get there, the movie has already started, and it's going to start at its scheduled time whether you're there or not. The movie in, these, in this example is the data being emitted by the observable. If you arrive late and you subscribe late, too bad for you. You've missed the beginning of the movie, but you can continue watching on from where you got there. On the other hand, watching a movie on Netflix is like a cold observable because no matter whether or not someone else is already watching the movie that you want to, or how many people are watching the movie that you want to, your stream doesn't start until you start watching the movie, AKA subscribing to it. So everyone who's watching a movie has their own separate stream of this data, and they can all be watching uh, the same movie at different points at the same time. Okay. Now let's take a look at some marble tests, some examples of them, and see how hot and cold observables are used there. Just a disclaimer, we will be using jasmine marbles in this presentation. Uh, there are multiple different kinds, but for us, this is our favorite. And thank you, Mike and Brandon, for writing this. You're awesome. Are they in the room? I'm not here. They're not right. here. That's okay. They'll see it on the recording. I was going to kick yeah. them out of the quiz They'll anyway. Get the applause. Right. Okay, so first let's take a look at what we're going to test. This is the load dancer's effect. If you don't know what NGRX effects do, they listen for actions to be dispatched, and then after performing some side effect, they return a new action. So what this effect is doing is listening for the load dancer's uh, action to be dispatched. It then executes the get dancers function on the dancer service, and if successful, returns the load dancer success action along with the dancers as a payload. If the request fails, it'll return the load dancers fail action. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, we don't want that. Okay, so this is one of the tests that we might write against that particular effect. As you can see here, there are three basic sections to the test. Uh, first, we set up our payload data, then, we uh, prepare our starting and completion actions before we set up our effects and uh, uh, say what we expect to actually happen. Here you can see that we are declaring a hot observable to represent a stream of actions. This is because before the test begins, actions could already be getting dispatched. The result and ex the response and expected result are cold observables because they will not emit any values before the test begins. Also, we are using marble syntax to describe what these observables are doing. So the action that starts this process is dispatched after a 10 frame delay. Then, after another 10 frame delay, we receive the response to the HTTP request with the set of dancers before the observable stops emitting values. 
The expected result has two 10 frame delays after returning the completion action. The reason for having two 10 frame delays here is because the starting action and the response had one 10 frame delay, and the, the result is delayed by both of these. Okay, now let's take a look at a, a test against when this all goes wrong. So if the HTTP request fails, then um, this would be the test that we would write. The structure is pretty similar, except for when we're setting up the, the payload data, uh, instead of uh, actually setting up uh, the success data, in this case, we are returning an error. So we will have an error as the payload. Also, one of the main differences here is that the response here is actually throwing an error. So again, we're not going to be returning some data from the HTTP request. It throws the error. We're going to, to deal with that. The expected result here still has two 10 frame delays uh, before emitting the completion action. This again is because the previous two steps in this process have one 10 frame delay each and we need to account for it in our expected result. Okay, time to dive a little deeper. Let's take a look at a scenario where we need to work with the scheduler that determines values, that determines when values are emitted from observables. Okay, so what if the functionality that you are testing is doing something to change the schedule that the uh, observable is emitting values? A good example of this might be a debounce to suppress the number of values emitted while a user is typing in some sort of a search criteria. RxJS operators internally use the async scheduler to determine when they will emit values. So what we can do is use the get test scheduler method that is provided by Jasmine Marbles to get a scheduler and inject it into our effects when we run tests so that we can control the flow however we need. Keith, could you show us how we are able to inject the scheduler into our effects? Absolutely, Sam. Okay, so here's the constructor for our effects. So, what we're, what we're able to do here is use injection tokens to optionally uh, inject a debounce value and a new scheduler, which we can then use in the test for our effects. With these in place, we can go ahead and use the injected scheduler if one is provided, or if one is not, we'll just go ahead and use the default async scheduler from RxJS. So this effect handle, handles a search of the dancers. The effect starts with the dispatch of a search action. It then applies the debounce to the data stream, suppressing any value from being emitted for a period of time. This is where we can use our injected debounce value and scheduler when we test. When we are not testing, the ACN scheduler will take care of things. Okay, so when setting up the test bed for our tests, we can take advantage of the injection tokens that we were looking at just a moment ago. Um, and provide a debounce value and use the get test scheduler function that's provided by Jasmine Marbles to inject the scheduler that we can use in our tests. The reason for setting the debounce value here at 30 is to make things a little easier for us as we are testing so that we don't have to write quite so many dashes in these tests if we have a longer debounce. Now that we have provided a test scheduler, we have set the debounce value to 30. Our test is pretty similar to the ones we looked at earlier. One thing that I'll point out is that the expected result has a delay of 50 frames. This is because the starter action and the response each have a delay of 10 frames before the 30 frame debounce is applied to the effect. Hey Sam, why don't we show a little more interesting example of uh, this type of a test and see how it relates to the diagrams that you were showing earlier. Groovy, Keith. All right, let's do it. So in this example, we show a little more about what debounce is actually doing for us. As you can see here, uh, the search action is being dispatched a number of times. Notice that in the expected result, that even though the search action was dispatched three times, the success action is uh, only returned twice. This is because the debounce, uh, the debounce is suppressing the values and not allowing the values to make it through until the 30 frame delay that we had set earlier in the, in the test bed had completed. So now, why don't we see how this, this uh, action stream and the expected result look in a diagram. This marble diagram 
is showing how the data is flowing through our example and how it is, and how it is influenced by the debalance time operator. Sorry. As you can see here in the diagram, the values emitted by the observable correspond to the actions to the action stream in the example test. The output from the observable shows how the values are affected by the debounce time and how it corresponds to the expected result in our example test. And now, without further ado, it's the time that you've all been waiting for. It's our 80s dance battle! Nice. Oh, this is exciting. So how are we gonna do this? We're gonna bring up some people. Maybe Brad, you can come up and dance for us. We'll get some other folks. We'll have a battle. Sound good? I mean, we could do that. Or, what better, who better to show us the 80s dance moves than the 80s stars themselves? It's time to make these 80s stars duke it out in the most grueling but fabulous way. It's a dance battle for the ages. Okay, so uh, again, here's the URL for the project. You're uh, welcome to follow along if you'd like, um, but it's not required, so you can also just watch as we code through it. After you've cloned the project, if you are deciding to do this with us, you can run npm install to get all the correct dependencies you will need for this project. To run the project on your machine, just run npm start uh, from the command line, and, um, and then in a separate terminal, if you want to run the, the test, you can just run npm test. If you fall behind or miss a step, you can run these commands to get caught up at the end of each task. We are going to use test-driven development to write this feature, so first, we're going to start off with writing the test. At this point, the test will be failing because we haven't actually written the functionality yet. So together, we will make that functionality work and the test pass. Fingers crossed, Keith is a lot more uh, optimistic about this than I am. Hey, have a little faith in me. <laughs> All right, Get So it? Keith, John will be... Hyatt, 1987, anyone? Nice, okay. <laughs> Keith will be live coding along with you, so you can follow along with him, and if you have any questions, do your best robot, and I will help you. <laughs> okay, uh, if you're following along, if you uh, head over to this, this uh, URL here, it'll take you to the description. Let's go ahead and start coding. So, first of all, let me get, oh, that's not where we're going yet, okay. So here's the application that we're working with. Uh, so like we mentioned earlier, it's a, a, a simple clone of the Tour of Heroes that we've modified a little bit. We've replaced heroes with dancers. And what we are able to do, if I can see my mouse here, is um, we have a, a, a set of some of the 80 stars and we're able to choose from those stars and pit them against each other so let's see here, let's choose Susanna Hoffs. All right, and we can click the battle button and there we go. They are in their dance battle, battle processing. Problem is, right now, this is not actually processing the battle and telling us who is actually going to win. So that's what we're gonna implement now. All right, so into the code base here. Uh, so. I am using Wallaby JS in my editor. That's how we get uh, some of this nice feedback over here, uh, letting us know what tests are passing and failing. Uh, you're welcome to use that if you're following along as well. The configuration file for it is at the root of the project, but not needed. You can just run the tests uh, using Karma by running npm test at the, uh, at the root as well. Okay, so again, we are using good test-driven development style here, so the first thing that we're going to do is write a test that will be failing and then fill in the functionality that's going to uh, get that passing. Uh, so real quick, before we get into the test, I'm just gonna write the shell of our effect so that we can reference that in our test. So we are, if I could spell that right, uh, writing an effect called battle. It is going to return an observable of an action Okay, I think that is good for our shell. So let's go ahead and move over to the tests and start writing here. So we start off by writing our describe. Uh, so this is going to be used to group together all of the tests that, uh, that we're writing for this particular um, effect. Okay, so we've got our 
the scribe for grouping that. Let's go ahead and start writing our, our test. So this should return a uh, battle outcome determined action with the outcome on success. Okay, so now, what's next? So uh, first of all, we wanna go ahead and set up our, our payload data like we were talking about earlier. So we're gonna need an outcome. And we have a nice enum that gives us uh, all of the possible outcomes there. So we'll grab one of those. Uh, we need a challenger, which is a dancer and a challengee. Wow, this is difficult looking to the side while I'm doing this, but it's coming together. Okay. Yeah, Keith! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we got our, uh, oh, you know what? I'm realizing I forgot, we got to new these up. These are new instances of these classes. So there we go. There's all the red lines gone. Okay, now we set up our starting and completion actions. So this is, again, a new battle action, and it takes a payload that includes the challenger and the challengee. All right, that looks satisfied. And our completion action is a battle outcome determined action, which is going to receive our outcome. Okay, so let's go ahead and start, um, let's see here. Uh, I again did not new that up, look at that. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our effect. So the, uh, the action stream is a hot observable. And so here we're just simulating the, the action making its way into the action stream by being dispatched. Then we set up our battle. This is a cold observable. And here, we are going to uh, return the outcome. All right, now our expected result. Okay, again, uh, like we were talking about earlier, the, the previous two steps had, two, had a 10 frame delay, so we need to account for both of those here. So we have our two 10 frame delays, and then we return our completion action. Okay, there we go. And that looks okay. We'll just get rid of that little space there. Okay. Okay, and lastly, we just need to tell the dancer service action what it should be returning. And in this case, it is our battle. That'll include the outcome. Okay, so now it's time to just set up uh, what we actually expect the, the result to be. And in this case, the, um, the effect battle it should be an observable of our expected result. Okay, all right, so we have our test written here, and of course, it is failing. So let's go ahead and get it working. All right, so uh, we're back at our effect. So this is looking for, uh, again, a type of the battle action. Okay, there we go. And once the battle action has been dispatched, then uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and execute the, um, uh, the function to get the, uh, the results. So we'll take our action here. This is the battle action. And this dot dancer service. Okay, here we go. Now this takes a couple of parameters. So let's go ahead and fill that in. So the, we can get that off of the uh, action payload. We saw that earlier, that that's where everything was being housed. And the challenge E. Okay, all right. Got that all set up. Now let's just go ahead and, and uh, map that over to our results. 
So that function, it returns an outcome, and we're gonna map that over to the battle outcome determined and pass in the outcome. And there we go, green lights. Woo! We got it passing. All right. Okay, so, so we have our happy path done. Next, we need to take care of any errors that, that might come up. So let's go ahead and, and write the test for that. Uh, this one might go a little bit faster because uh, it's pretty similar in a lot of ways to the previous one, so we can take advantage of doing a little copying and pasting. But first, let's write what we expect to happen. So this should return, this should return a battle fail action if there is an error. Okay, so, uh, so we set up our payload, uh, payload data. Uh, in this case, it's going to be an error. Oh no, it, it failed. Okay, so we have that. And uh, now I'm just gonna go ahead and, and since uh, a lot of this is the same, I'm gonna go ahead and copy that, paste it down here. Uh, the completion though is a little different. So let's go ahead and write that one out. So uh, in this case, we are going to be doing a battle fail and its payload is the error. And I again didn't do it up, so there we go. Okay, so the actions, let's go ahead and set up our, our effect here. This again is a hot observable. Passing in our starting action. Now, uh, the, the battle itself is going to be a little different here because, again, this is our uh, not so happy path. So it is, again, a cold observable, but instead of actually putting a variable in here to return a value, we're instead going to have that dreaded error in it. So, again, no value being passed, uh, uh, passed into that variable, but instead, we're gonna throw the error, okay? And, uh, and then the rest of it is, um, is pretty similar. So let's go ahead and uh, again, do a little bit of copy and paste. So, all right. So we have our, um, we have our test written. It's again failing. Let's go ahead and get it working. Okay, so in this case, really all that we need to do is catch that error and map it over to the appropriate function. So, we're going to do a catch error. We have the error here, and we are going to make that an observable of a battle fail with the error as the payload. And with that, back to green. All right, I'm gonna save that. Let's, let's take a look at what we have in the application now and see, uh, see how far we've come. So, let's see here. All right, so we're back at our, our application. Uh, we got Michael Jackson still here. Uh, let's see, who, who do we want to have him battle this time? We got the list here. Any, yeah, yeah, what? Bowie, David Bowie, here we go. All right, let's see who wins. All right, ah, Michael Jackson, isn't he awesome? This is great, but we didn't get to see them dancing. I mean, that's, that's really what we're after, right? We want to see them dance. All right, so let's go ahead and, uh, and change this up so that uh, we can actually see that happen. We'll add in a little delay and still process the battle, but you know, get to see the action. So again, let's head back over to our test and we'll write one more test here. So this should return a battle outcome determined action after a 30 frame delay. Okay. Okay, so there we go. Um, I'm again, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead, just to, to keep us moving here, I'm gonna go ahead and, and copy since most of that is, is pretty much the same. And in, uh, in your real applications, you might take some, some of this is, is very similar. You could move some of this up to the top of the describe and share it amongst uh, all of your tests. But, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that there for now. Uh, the one difference here is gonna be that in our uh, starting action, uh, we're gonna go ahead and pass in a value into an optional parameter here, uh, the delay. 
So let's go ahead and add in the 30 frame delay right there. Okay, and then we will go ahead and set up our, um, our observable, our effect again. So let's get that down here. And, uh, but this one, of course, we're planning on having a delay again, right? So before, we were just planning on having the two 10 frame delays. This time, we need to take, it, um, uh, take into account the additional 30, 30 frames. So we'll go ahead and add our 30 frames right there. We gotta tell our dancer service what it should be returning. And that again is the battle. And then our expectation, the effect battle to, to be the expected observable. Okay, how we doing? All right, we got our test written. It's again failing. So let's go ahead and get that working and then see where we are. So we just need to add in the delay again here. So uh, right before we map out the results, we're just gonna go ahead and add in a delay. Now, what we wanna do, again, the delay was optional. So uh, we're, we're gonna go ahead and grab the, uh, the payload from the action here and take the delay and use that. But again, optional. So if it's not there, we're just gonna go ahead and set a zero delay. Uh, the other thing that we need to do, because notice that we're still in the red here, we need to get this test working, or we need to get the, this functionality working. Um, we need to go ahead and use that injected test scheduler that we had set up earlier. So we're gonna go ahead and see if the, the scheduler is, um, uh, is available for us, but if it's not, we'll just use the default async scheduler. And there we are, we were momentarily, we are back in the green. So awesome, let's take a look at the test. Yeah, everything's looking good. This is great. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look back at our application and see how we're doing. Okay, so again, Michael Jackson. Last time it was David Bowie. Any other takers here? Who's next? Mick Jagger, Stevie Nicks? Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks. All right, here we go. Let's see how this goes. Okay, we got some dancing going on. Battle in progress. Who's gonna win? Michael Jackson again, that guy's amazing. Oh. <laughs> All right, great. Uh, okay, well, let's, uh, let's see what's next. So last but not least, it's quiz time. Woo, quiz time! Okay, while Keith is getting that set up, we're gonna hear from our awesome sponsors. I don't wanna put this too close to it. Okay, about what our prize is. Short version and then the long version when, when someone wins. Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Brian Darth Oasis Digital, and we are auctioning, offering, not auctioning, offering uh, one public ticket to our Angular Boot Camp. Woo! We, I am very serious. Online or in person? If you win the quiz, you get to go to Angular Boot Camp. Yep. You can also send <laughs> somebody else. <laughs> yeah, Oasis great. Digital! Great. Yeah, so... Um, Angular Boot Camp. So what do Ooh. they need to do okay. here, Sam? Oh, man, they got it. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so you can out. go um, on your phone or I think on your laptop to kahoot.it, enter the pin, come up with an awesome nickname. I don't know yep. if Mike and Brandon are still in here, but if you are, you can't play. That's cheating. This is awesome. Okay. We're getting, oh, Wait, a lot of people our, here. Where's our music? Amazing. What's that? Where's our music? Where's our, our awful Kahoot yeah, music? Yeah, I don't know. The music uh, music seems to be gone. What? But uh, maybe it starts when we hit start. Do, do, All right, we, we still got do, a lot do, of people coming in here. Do, do, All right, we'll, we'll give do, you just do, another moment here. Do, 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 We're actually do, doing really good on time, do, so. Do, do, do. Wow, There's 67, horrible Kahoot 68, music, but. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, I'm getting about 30 more seconds. Brad Green's hat. <laughs> okay, and there are rules to this game. If uh, whoever is in the top three, I'm gonna say, who is this person? Because everybody wants to know. And, and you're gonna have to yell or do a dance or something. That's the rule. And if you don't do it, sorry man. Okay, let's start. Okay, where is my mouse? There it is, here okay. we go. All right, are you ready? 
Nine questions coming up here. Nine questions. I hope you took notes. What is the relationship between observables and marbles? Marbles represent observables. Observables watch for marbles to emit a value, or marbles are hot observables. Or marbles are hot and observables are cold. What's yeah. wrong with the music? I don't know. Where is it? Oh, they can still hear me if I whisper. <laughs> okay. All right, we're getting a lot of answers here. Time's almost up. 48 correct answers here. That's great. Awesome. All right, let's see. Uh, who do we have in the, in the lead? Who is Nate, Nate D? D? Nate D. Woo, awesome. Yeah, Nate Good D. Good job, man. Okay. Okay, next. Here we go. Next. What are the observable types we have covered today? RxJS observables, but specific, like, be specific here. Hot and cold or 80s observables? All of the above is not an option. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm not even getting it. There's no music. All right, three, two, one. 73 correct answers. This is awesome. You guys are doing great. Okay, so ah, we had a change in the lead here. Plepster? Plepster? Hey, nice. All right. Good job. Get a narrow lead at this point, though. Keep it up. All right, next. So what is the difference between hot and cold observables? I just, I just took that out. Uh, so HO is continuously watching even when test isn't running. Cold observables are built in. Hot observables are uh, written in a template, while cold observables are in a component. What say you? Ooh, good job, guys. Nice, nice. Okay, let's see. Who's in the lead? Who's Lanny? Lanny. Yeah, oh, nice. yeah, Lance. Good job. That's, All right. how's that gonna work? Aren't you an instructor at Angular Bootcamp? <laughs> 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 okay. All right, next question. What does the dash mean in a marble test? It separates values and makes it easier to read. It represents values being displayed on the screen. It is a measure of time in frames. Man, I'm sad. The Kahoot music is really bad. <laughs> well, that's not supposed to make you sad if it's bad. I mean, it's good. Like, it's, it's a good, good bad. It's, it's a good, a good bad. bad. Like Michael Jackson bad, who won all the dance <laughs> battles. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so it's a measure of time in frames. Okay, nice. Justin T. This is amazing. Woo! Good job. The, who's going to win? Person. I have no idea. This is crazy. Okay. All right, here we go. Next question. Here we go. Who had the best selling album of the 80s? Madonna, Prince, Michael Jackson, or David Bowie? This should be easy. Come on, guys. Huh. You got huh. this. the best selling album? Yeah. Question mark. No Googling it either. This is good. Yep. Here we go. How are we doing? 81? 81 answers? 82? Right at the last? Ooh, oh, that was, 65? That was, right. Yeah. Michael Jackson just wins everything. This is Man, crazy. <laughs> that guy's not fair. Who All is right. Danger Dan? Yeah, Danger nice. Dan. All right. Who All is right. Applesauce? Okay, I got to know. <laughs> Who is Applesauce? Applesauce? Hi, Anyone? Applesauce. Applesauce? Okay, nice. <laughs> I got a thumbs up back there. All right, Okay. Get close. All right, here we go. What type of, of observable does the subscription carrot work with? I believe I got fussed at for this one. <laughs> Hot and cold, they will both subscribe eventually. Hot observables or cold observables? 73, 73. Man, you guys are quick. This is amazing. Just a small 82. town girl. How many people Living do we have in, in this? Living in a lonely world. All right, two, she one. She took the midnight train on me. All right, a little more even spread here. 43 correct answers, Ooh. though. Let's see how we're doing. Applesauce. Applesauce, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, how many questions left? Uh, let's see here. Well, Question seven of nine. Okay, so why won't the subscription, whoa, uh, subscription carrot work on cold observables? What you talking about, Willis? Uh, it works on both because cold observables are not subscribing to anything. Since hot observables are already running, they have to subscribe. There we go. This one's a little slower. We didn't go over this, uh, this question, so. Ah, there we go. Okay. 38 correct answers. Let's see how we're doing. A Who new is A. Leader. Jones? A. Jones. All right. 
Good job. Hey, Jones. Here we go. Did they go? Oh, okay. Hi, Jones. <laughs> Good job. All right, I think we got two more. So, okay. still a chance for folks two to- Two more questions. Yeah. How many frames are represented by one dash? 15 frames, 20 frames, 30 frames, 10 frames. It's 15 frames, right? It's 15 frames. Oh. Wait, oh, I wasn't supposed to say that. Wait, no, it's not. That's why I whisper. 15 frames, pretty sure. Pretty sure it's 15. Yeah, no. <laughs> All right, 71 oh, correct answers. I think How people, many people were paying did I attention. Pull? This is ah, good. I got three people. Yeah? I got three people. <laughs> Sorry. <did> <laughs> we apologize. Okay. A. Jones. Yeah, A. Jones. Wow, nice. You've been wow, in the lead two the longest. In a row. Good ah, job, Justin D, though. I good. see you. Oh, we got the next one. Okay. What does an X represent in a marble diagram? The spots? Of course, that's got to be it. A subscription point for a hot observable, a value emitted, or an error. It's the spot, right? It's the spot. Pretty sure it's the spot. I mean. What you talking about, Willis? What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> it's the spot. Okay, one second. Good job, All right. guys. Nice, nice, most of you. A couple of people actually took us up on the spot. This is great. Yeah, that's... I like that. All right. Okay, who's Jared? Jared. Yeah, Jared. Good job, Jared. Woo! He's awesome. Good job. Jared, come on up here. You won. Did he won? Yeah, he won. Woo! Yeah. Oh, I'm go. sorry. I always do that. All right, so I'm just going to tell you really quick about Angular Bootcamp. It is a three-day intensive course that we offer. It's taught by the likes of Bill Odom, Paul Spears, Lance Finney, Sani Youssef. We got a lot of great instructors out there. We do it publicly in various cities throughout the US online. We also do it privately for teams. So many of you in this room probably do not need Angular training. Why are we giving this out? Well, yeah. you can give it to your mother-in-law, your neighbor's cat, or you can apply it to a team purchase. So we also do it privately for teams. So feel free to apply this to either yourself, your friends, or anybody else. And if you have any questions, stop by and see us in the booth outside. And thank you very much. Thank you. Good job, Jared. All right, awesome. Am I still on? Okay. Yep, you're yep. still on. Okay. Great. There's a little bit more. Yep. Almost done. Okay. okay, what's next? Here we go. Review. So we're going to review really quick. So in this talk, we briefly discussed the benefits of marble testing, or unit testing, just, but marble testing in specific. All right, that thing stopped working, so here we go. <laughs> we went over marbles and marble diagrams. We looked at marble syntax. And we talked about hot and cold observables. We went through some example marble tests, discussed the test scheduler and how we can use that in our tests to override the scheduler. We had an 80s dance off where we exercised uh, uh, together or wrote a little bit of code together implementing marble tests. And we had a quiz. Uh, we would like to give a special thank you to the NG Conference organizers, some of which are in the room. And um, uh, of course, the NGRX organizers and the Angular community. You guys are great. And if you don't know, um, one of the organizers is actually my mom. So <laughs> we'd like to say a very, very special thank you to the NG Conference organizers. Cause... So here are the slides one more time. And they will be tweeted out after our talk. Um, so no worries if you did not get them. And, and now, now you know, know and, and knowing, knowing is half the, the battle. battle. Yeah. All right, thanks, guys.